Today, we are going to work on 10.4, which is combine volumes together. We've spent two days on this, so we did spend yesterday working on this. Today, they are taking it home for homework. There are some challenges with it that I'll kind of explain as we go along. This is one of the harder concepts for kids to understand just because there's lots of numbers that sometimes we don't need. Sometimes they have difficulty knowing how to split the object, which I pre-did with them today. So I'm going to go through what the homework looks like. So all um, we did do in class, we did do number one and we did do number six together. So to explain how to find volume, at the top of their math page, they usually give an example. And this one says, what is the volume of this solid figure? Now, if you look at the top of the page, there are two separate kind of blocks going on. So the students already know how to find volume and it says make sure that you find the length, width, and height of each rectangular prism. So they gave the example of this as block A and this as block B. So you need to find block A first and then block B. Once you find the volume of both of those, then you add the volumes together. Sometimes the kids accidentally multiply them together because they're just multiplying the whole time. So we're gonna, so what they did at the top of the page is they broke apart the shapes into um, rectang a rectangular prism A, which was the bottom, and rectangular prism B, which was that top piece. And they found the volumes of both of those, and they kind of show you over here. This, the larger one was 320, the smaller one was 40, and then they added them together. So the top of the page does show you how to do it. Um, the biggest problems that kids have, now this one is very basic. They literally give you the three to multiply for the bottom. They give you the three for the top. They made that one very basic. The ones for homework I feel like aren't quite as basic. Like I said, we did numbers one and six in class, so I'm gonna try to do at least two, three, and four with you guys. So what my suggestion is, is to cover up the um, other objects. So I'm gonna do the small one on top first. And if you notice, I kind of showed the students where I would personally cut it. Um, a few, one of the students asked like, how do you know? I feel like that is just something that you will pick up on as time goes by. There's really no answer for that. But what I like to do is cover that up. Now these math books are not meant for, I feel like they were not invented by teachers because they do not give you a whole lot of room to work. So you'll see that my work, I might have to like kind of go up here. I feel like these were not designed by teachers because we would have given you a lot more work. So now that I have everything shaded in, I am going to look at the length from left to right. Well, it doesn't tell me it here. I don't see it. Oh, right here is my length from left to right. So there's my three, because that's my length times width times height. So left to right is three. Front to back is eight. Front to back is eight. And then the height of bottom to top is one. So this time I used all three numbers that were exposed, three, eight, and one. Well, three times eight is 24 times one, and that's 24. What I told the students to do is to write the volume of that shape inside of that box so they don't forget. So I had left to right, and I showed the kids that this is three, so all of this is three. So that means the, um, from left to right is three, front to back is eight, and then bottom to top is one. And I got 24. Now I'm going to cover up all of my other pieces. I'm gonna cover up this top piece. Okay, now if you see here, I have a lot of numbers. I have four right here. I have seven right here. I have eight, I have three, and I have four. So I got a lot of stuff going on. I'm curious as to what this four, so this four over here represents the entire height. But notice I already, I'm cutting off some of it. I don't, I'm not using that height. In 
that's where a lot of kids get mixed up. That four was for the whole shape, but I've already actually used one of it. So I'm not worried about that height. I'm not even worried about this piece because I need to know the length of the whole thing. So that's what gets confusing is that there's a lot of numbers on here that we actually don't need. I need to know the whole length left to right and that's seven. I need to know the whole length front to back and that's eight. And then I need to know the height of only this piece. That four would have even thrown me off. That four represented the whole height. I'm not using the whole height. I'm only using the height of the bottom piece. So I'm going to do um, seven times eight is 56, and then I need to multiply that by three. So there's a lot more work involved with this. So three times six is 18. Three times five is 15, plus one is 16. So I get 168 for that shape. So now that I have my volumes for both of my shapes, I now need to add them together. And how I like to think of this, I kind of showed the students earlier, this shape would almost be like this. Here's my bottom piece, here's my top piece. So on my bottom piece is 168, my top piece is 24, and I wanna know the combined volume of these. So I'm gonna add 24 plus 168. Sometimes it's easier for them to see those physical objects. So 168 plus 24, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 6, 7, 8, 9, and I get a hundred and 192 and then centimeters cubed. I really didn't leave enough room for that. 192 centimeters cubed, and that's for all of shape two all of shape two. Okay, let's look at number three. Now, if you notice, I'm kind of running out of space to do my work. Now, once again, I told the students how to block this off. You could have done this. You could have done it where this whole side is a shape and then this one. I chose to do it as a base and then a piece up here. Um, Cause I think with the numbers, I think that will help us more. Okay, now we need to kind of understand what all these numbers represent. Seven is the whole side. Five is just this piece. One is right here. Two is this height. Four is front to back. And three is this width. So sometimes um, it might be a good idea to kind of go through and understand everything that you're looking at. We have three here from left to right. I have four going front to back. This is only two feet. Seven is the entire height of the whole thing. Five is just from like this step and up. This five represents just the height of this piece. And then we have one going across there. So sometimes you kind of need to look at that. So I'm going to do this bottom piece first. And if you see, once I cover that up, they actually give me the length, which is three. Front to back is four bottom to top is two. Thankfully, they give me my three numbers, which is making it a lot easier for me. So I'm going to do, um, let's see, four times two is eight, and then bring down my times three. I'm gonna just draw that line so I know that my, where my work is. Four times two is eight, and bring down your times three. Eight times three is 24. So we have 24 for that bottom shape. And even if you wanna circle that bottom shape to let you know. Now let's look at this top shape. Notice I've already used this, so that's why I'm covering it up. I've already used that, so I'm covering it up. Mistake number one, kids are going to do seven times one times five, that is not correct. This seven represents the entire height but this five represents the height right here. That's the only number, that's the only height I'm concerned about. I'm not concerned about that seven. So I can guarantee that a lot of kids are going to do seven times five times one. That is not correct. Let's look. Left to right, I know is one. Left to right, 
So this width right here from left to right is one. Front to back, notice it doesn't tell me. It does not tell me front to back. I don't see that up here. But if you look down here, this is four. So that means this is four, this is four, this is four, this is four. This entire object goes from front to back four feet. A lot of kids are gonna miss that. And then the height, once again, we're only looking at this piece. The height is only five. I can guarantee you I'm gonna get a lot of kids that are gonna put 35 right there. And breaking it up the other way, you still would have had to have uh, figured out um, if you would have broken it up the other way, you could have done seven times one, but you still would have had to know that four goes up there. So either way you do it, you still would have had to have figured out um, the differences there. So for this shape, this top piece, I have one times five, and then the times four down here, so that's 20. Now I kind of look at this piece well, let me see, probably like this. So here is my bottom base, and then here is my book. This is kind of how I'm seeing it. So this bottom is 24, and then this book is 20. That's kind of how I'm looking at this. This would be my book sitting right here, and this would be my base. So I now need to add those two numbers, 20 plus 24, and I get 44 feet cubed. 44 feet cubed. So I really want the students to pay attention and know you're not just multiplying every single number you see and that's a big mistake. Especially as, like this one was pretty obvious, the three numbers. This one, uh, I bet a lot of kids would do seven times one times five. No, 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 seven is the whole height. We were only concerned with the height from here to here. We were not concerned with the whole height. So my answer for that one is 44. Number four should be relatively easy, except the numbers are larger. But just by looking at this, they are making this much easier for me. However, the numbers are a little bit larger. So you have a big box under here, and then you have a little box up there. Okay, a big box and a little box. So I'm going to choose to do the big box first. And right away, I can see my three numbers. Left to right is 16. Front to back is 10. Bottom to top is nine. I'm going to choose to do 16 times nine first. Although the students know they can pick any way that they want. So nine times six is 54. Nine times one is nine, and then plus five is 14. So I have 144 times 10. So I know that that's just 1,440. 1,440 for this bottom shape. Once again, this time it was easy. Left to right, 16. Front to back, 10. Bottom to top, nine. This time they gave me all the numbers and they made it kind of easy for me. But I had to do, the, the math was a little bit trickier. I, had to, I chose to do 16 times nine and then I knew I was just going to have to add a zero. So I got 1,440. Now the top one they also made just as easy. So left to right, now even though it's not down here on the bottom, left to right, left to right, left to right, it's right there, it's five. So left to right is five, front to back is six, and then bottom to top is three. So left to right, sometimes you have to look like the one on the bottom, it made it really easy for us. Over here, left to right is five, front to back is six, and bottom to top is three. It would be nice if they would point to it, but then I think that might make it too obvious. So five times six is 30, and bring down your times three. Five times six is 30, bring down your times three. Three times three is nine, and then add a zero. 
So those are my two numbers. As you can see, this bottom box is much larger. It's 1,440, and this box is a lot smaller, but it doesn't matter. I still need to add them. So 1,440 plus 90. And there's my answer. 1,530 meters cubed. 1,530 meters cubed. These take a lot more work. Regular volume is super easy. Finding the volume of one cube is easy, especially if they give you all the numbers. Finding the volume of combined rectangular prism takes uh, uh, your brain a whole other step forward. You not only have to find the volume of the various shapes, but you have to figure out what numbers do you need and what numbers do you not need. How are you going to split it? There's a lot more involved. So tonight I did tell the students how to split it because we're going to work on this for weeks to come. All right, this shape, I had told the students it kind of reminded me of a semi-truck um, or just a truck. Sometimes it helps to think of it as an object. So we kind of have the front of like the truck where the truck driver sits and then here would be like the cargo. So I think this one's going to be kind of easier as well. I chose to tell the students to split it this way as opposed to long way. You can do it whatever way you would like. You could have chose to split it like this and have it be one long piece and then a sh and then that shorter piece on top. I chose to do it like this. So I'm going to cover all that up. Now, once again, don't just assume these are the three numbers that you're going to multiply. Never just assume that. Take the time and make sure that it works. So left to right, I have four. Front to back, look at that, it's right here. Front to back, I have three. Bottom to top, I have four. So that time, all three numbers actually did work. So four times three is 12. And then 12 times 4 is 48. So this shape has a volume, just this front little guy has a volume of 48 feet cubed. Just this front one. Like I said, some students may choose to cut it an opposite way. I'm not too worried about that right now. We're going to work on, we're going to continue to work on this um, because I do think it's an important topic and it is a much harder topic that requires a lot more than just your basic thinking. So this front piece is 48 feet cubed. Now I'm going to look at just this back piece. Now notice there are four numbers exposed, but 13 feet represent the whole thing, even the stuff that's covered. Nine represents just the height from like here up which we chose to not do it that way. 13 represents the entire height of this piece. 10 represents the front to back of just this piece. So there's a few things that I'm gonna have to figure out. I do not wanna use 13 because I am not finding the whole length. Remember, we cut some of this off. So I'm not using 13. I am not using just this height. I have to use the whole height, so I'm also not using the nine. So let's look at what we have. Um, left to right, so this piece right here, I have to figure out this width right here. I think I'm probably going to have to go all the way down to here. Notice it does not tell me what this space is. So I'm just going to kind of take my hand and travel along. Okay, I still don't know. Oh, and then down here it finally tells me four. So this is four, this is four, and it kind of keeps going. So that means left to right is four. So let's see where I have some room. Four. <coughs> um, we can, um, front to back is 10, and then bottom to top is 13. So these are my three numbers that I am multiplying. Once again, you guys, they did not give us a ton of room on this page to work. I'm sure most kids will need to use another piece of paper because it's kind of hard. I mean, there's this page looks crazy right now. Okay, so I'm going to choose to do four times 13 first. 
4 times 3 is 12, and then 4 times 1 is 4 plus 1 is 5, so I got 52. And then add my 0, so I got 520. So now I have my two shapes. Now the problem, the hard part about this one was that you had to figure out that this width was 4, and it wouldn't have really mattered what way you cut it. I'm trying to think, even if you cut it this way, you still would have had to know that that width was 4. So sometimes they don't put them exactly where you need it. And once again, this time we had two exposed that we actually did not need to use. So I had to use the height, which was 13, the, um, also the front to back, which was 10, and then I had to look and see that this four traveled all the way up there. And I got 520. So now we are going to add 520 plus 48. And I get eight, six, and five. So my answer is 568 feet cubed for this shape. 568 feet cubed. Now the other two in my class we did do um, because I we split this into two days. So we did do problem one together in class and we did do problem six together in class. So the students were only responsible for two, three, four, and five. And if you see, there's a lot of work on this page. There's a lot of work to do these combined volumes. So the students may need another piece of paper. <coughs> I like for them to circle their answers just so I can clearly see it. I am not expecting the students to master that, this right now, you guys. This is only day two that we have done this. We're going to work on this a lot more. If you're watching this at a later point in the year, hopefully we have seen, um, we, you will be able to see this and kind of know how to work this out.